Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm doing a makeup video. I haven't done one of these for a while. So this is my updated, nearly new look for every day. Let's get started. So my skin is prepped, I'm cleansed, I'm moisturized, I'm wearing SPF. Just putting a little something on the lips because they're a little on the dry side. And I really like this CeraVe healing ointment for lips. Super generous, large sized product. And the ceramides I think really help with barrier function. Um, otherwise, lip balms don't really do much for me, I have to say. So, these days I tend to start with my eyes. I'm going to do my brows first, and I'm now back again using my Kevin O'Quan eyebrow pencil in brunette. I had a brief flirtation with Benefit, but having gone back to this, I much prefer the shade for me, and also... It's just the right kind of hardness that I don't find, you know, it invisible. And sometimes when the pencil's too hard, it can be really hard to get any sort of pigment to stick. And it's not too soft and smudgy because I really don't like it when the brow looks monotone, that makes sense. So these days I tend to anchor my heel of my hand um, on my lower cheek and then it kind of it creates like an arc, which I find ensures I put it in just the right place. You know, so using your pencil, outer corner, outer corner of the brow, um, side of the nostril, inner corner should be in line with your nostril, and then the arch of the brow should be nostril, pupil, mid-brow, got it? Um, so yeah, that's my new way of getting the arch in just the right place, if that makes sense. And then I wing it out ever so slightly. So let's just quickly match these two up. Again, anchoring it. I never used to do brows first, but Wendy Rowe showed me this and I've kind of stuck with it. Um, doing eyes and then skin and then kind of the color work, so to speak. So I'll probably go back in and adjust those a bit later and I will set them with good old Glossier Bow Boy Brow, um, but that's fine for now. Then I'm gonna do um, lashes using again, Kevin O'Quan curlers, which I've gotten really used to using again. I used to be a little bit lazy just realized that all my eye stuff right now is Kevin O'Connor, how interesting. Right, let's do the other one. Nice and close to the roots of the lashes. Careful not to remove the eyeball. Okay, and you really want to curl those outside ones. Those are the ones that really open up the eye and make everything pop. Now, this is a new discovery, people. Le Volume Mascara, which is a tubing mascara. Now, I've heard lots of chatter about these online, but I never kind of got around to getting one until recently. I have to say, I really like it because ugh, I have pretty decent lashes, and mostly I want definition and separation rather than great big thickened lashes. That looks not very me. But my main bugbear, of course, is the, the removal of mascara residue the next morning. A few of you have caught me out and you can see that sometimes I don't get all my eye makeup off. And that's because I think if you've got long lashes, mascara really is a chore to remove. You know, 10 cotton pads later and there can still be stuff left behind. But not with this one. You use the hot water on a cotton pad thing and uh, as everyone says, it comes off in those weird spidery globules. But um, I have to say, I'm smudge free in the morning. So, probably not the mascara if you like thick, thick lashes, but for me, for lengthening, <clears throat> for definition, I like it very much. The brush is also super delicate, so I can really get in there to separate out the lower lashes. I don't have to use a separate mascara with a different brush. So yeah, if you like delicate, accurate work with your mascara, give this a whirl. Let's just do the corner again. You can practically paint them one by one. Now, 
I only tend to do two coats for a night, but we'll see how that all looks at the end. Um, I'm a one coat in the morning kind of girl. Okay, but yeah, really like this. Have you tried it? Let me know what you think. Um, okay, so that's that done. And during like my average working day, I don't put color on my lids. I leave things be. So I'm actually ready to go on to skin now. Um, so I'm using NARS Tinted Moisturizer, the Radiant one, not the Velvet Matte one. And the color is Finland. Now. So I'm going to dot the dots, guys. You know the drill. I do vary in my shade in NARS. Sometimes I'm vanilla and sometimes I'm this one. But I always, always use a beauty blender to apply, even with a product as lightweight as this. It's just my habit now. So I'm using kind of the fat end of a big one to do the kind of broad brush strokes work, if you will, and spread it evenly over my skin where I want it. So most of the product is in the middle of my face and it's much, much sheerer there's much less on the blender as we work out towards the temples and jawline because I really don't like looking like I'm wearing much face. It's just not the look for me. Now, as I get in and around the nooks and crannies of the nose, I use the pointy end, as Arya Stark would say. There we go. So, and I don't put base around my eyes, I, I just use concealer and just where I need it because I really don't like the worry of product collecting and fine lines and becoming visible as, you know, skin naturally gets warm over the course of the day um, and product can move around. So I like to put it where I know what it's going to do. Okay. That's a nice sheer layer all over. Now we're gonna do some concealing. So under the eyes at the minute, I'm actually really liking Power Fabric Concealer from Armani. Um, good coverage, blendable, doesn't form lines. Um, and it really does melt nicely with the skin. It also doesn't tend to cling to dry skin, just you know, at the corner of the dark circle area, if you will. Sometimes they, I don't know, they catch and they almost end up exaggerating any little textural issues. And it's not uncommon to have some texture in that delicate skin. Now, I take it into the corner, that little hollow, which if you're tired can look particularly blue. And then I go back in with a baby blender can't live without these now for under eye concealer because again it's just that thing of pushing product in not rubbing so again you're not dislodging any dry areas which you know I'm a retinoid user and sometimes with all the good intentions you end up with product not where you need it to be and things get a little on the dry side so there we go now so that's pressed in I'll probably I tend to go into the blending side of things like in different sections, just as things settle onto the skin, particularly base, and you want to allow other things to kind of meld with it, you might then go in and do a bit more blending later on, depending on how things look. Anywho, um, new concealer brush, and let me see, I'm gonna use this one. So these are Sizzly under eye concealer brushes, but I actually like them for all kinds of concealer. Now, I'm using a little bit of NARS Vanilla in this case, it turns out, and I'm going to cover up two little vessels that I have as like little pets, one on either side of my nose. And again, I just use the blender to blend that so that I'm not either move, removing too much concealer or moving things around too much. It's just the best way I find to keep product where you put it and deliver the result that I'm looking for, which is natural, seamless, verging on invisible, but not quite. Okay, so that's 
you know, the basic structure, skin and eyes done. Um, I'm now going to move on to color. So um, I'm currently using Nars Dolce Vita, which is a really pretty pink. It looks pinker than I would normally go, but it's just so, you know, demure, virginal. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to catch the top of my cheekbone. Not too much, just enough. And I'm using... Gosh, I'm not even sure where this brush is from. It's a Japonesque one, 324. Um, because this is not a, not a contour, it's just a light dusting of a kind of rosy color I have in my complexion anyway. Um, I'm not gonna go too crazy with that. Um, and now I'm gonna do lips. So today I'm going to do a pencil with a gloss over the top. Now, at this stage, I'm just gonna blot off the excess lip balm. So my lips are hydrated, but they're not, you know, slippy. Okay, so everything feels smooth. There are no dry bits. And then I'm just gonna trace the Cupid's bow. This is Bare Minerals Gen Nude in Borderline. So, everyone has their own way of doing lip liner, but I, Put the most focus on the cupid's bow and then not too much on like the middle outer third and then I define the corner just to kind of give a bit of breadth almost my mouth is quite small and I just like to you know define the corners so they're impression of ever so slightly widening my mouth and then just underneath the lip line so you can always afford to go ever so slightly outside the lip line without worrying too much about looking obvious on the bottom lip because there's a natural shadow there okay and then i'm just going to lightly cover because this is a really good shade for my natural lip color um but it just gives me a bit more definition should never try to talk whilst penciling. And then as you colour in, you can almost go back over the edge again. Just, you know, to enhance what you were given naturally. All right. So if you're going to use a pencil as a base, very important that you do the moisturizing step first otherwise you do end up with that really unpleasant thing of little dry scrunchy bits later on so um, I've taken to wearing this particular gloss again which is quite pretty it's NARS um, Belize just because I want a little gloss a little texture uh, and again I put gloss just where you know if you were doing a lip augmentation procedure you would put the volume so bottom, lip, middle, and then these kind of, what we call the tubercles of the lip, just below the cupid's bow in the upper lip. And I think I'll do a little touch of something for contour, but it's not like a contour contour, it's actually a pretty soft finish. Um, it's a bronzing powder, but it's, you know, it's a good shade without too much red in it and just a light dusting where again the shadow would fall and then touch along the jawline now i mean this version of my everyday look is probably quite similar to the glass skin video i'm going to do at some point i promise um, i've been promising it for ages guys but um but yeah i like that whole translucence thing i like skin to look like skin i like where there's color to really just echo the natural shades and tones in the skin um so the color of the lip the brow um and i'm not a big person to say for a lot of color on my lids so i like everything to look natural but better so there we have the finished look hair down ready to go so glossy skin a bit of a brow a bit of a lash and natural nude tones that just enhance my coloring so that's my updated nearly nude look. Hope you enjoyed that. Bye for now.